Weekly Robot News. From developing site for robots and cars, joystick operated robots that help surgeons treat strokes, and introduction to Lunar Gateway's robot caretakers, all the way to Create 3 by iRobot, and the answer to the pressing question as to whether humans can compete with robots, we have it all and more. Highlights of the week Eye imaging technology for robots and cars. Even though robots don't have eyes with retinas, the key to helping them see and interact with the world more naturally and safely may rest in optical coherence tomography, or OCT machines, commonly found in the offices of ophthalmologists. One of the imaging technologies that many robotics companies are integrating into their sensor packages is light detection and ranging, or LIDAR for short. Currently commanding great attention and investment from self-driving car developers, the approach essentially works like radar, but instead of sending out broad radio waves and looking for reflections, it uses short pulses of light from laser. Traditional time-of-flight LiDAR, however, has many drawbacks that make it difficult to use in many 3D vision applications. Because it requires detection of very weak reflected light signals, other LiDAR systems, or even ambient sunlight, can easily overwhelm the detector. It also has a limited depth resolution and can take a dangerously long time to densely scan a large area, such as a highway or a factory floor. To tackle these challenges, researchers are turning to a form of LiDAR called Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave, or FMCW LiDAR. In a paper appearing March 29 in the journal Nature Communications, the Duke team demonstrates how a few tricks learned from their OCT research can improve on previous FMCW LiDAR data throughput by 25 times while still achieving submillimeter depth accuracy. Joystick-operated robot helps surgeons treat strokes. MIT engineers have developed a telerobotic system to help surgeons quickly and remotely treat patients experiencing a stroke or aneurysm. With a modified joystick, surgeons in one hospital may control a robotic arm at another location to safely operate on a patient during a critical window of time that could save the patient's life and preserve their brain function. The robotic system, whose movement is controlled through magnets, is designed to remotely assist in endovascular intervention, a procedure performed in emergency situations to treat strokes caused by a blood clot. Such interventions normally require a surgeon to manually guide a thin wire to the clot, where it can physically clear the blockage or deliver drugs to break it up. One limitation of such procedures is accessibility. Neurovascular surgeons are often based at major medical institutions that are difficult to reach for patients in remote areas, particularly during the golden hour, the critical period after a stroke's onset, during which treatment should be administered to minimize any damage to the brain. The MIT team envisions that its robotic system could be installed at smaller hospitals and remotely guided by trained surgeons at larger medical centers. The system includes a medical-grade robotic arm with a magnet attached to its wrist. With a joystick and live imaging, an operator can adjust the magnet's orientation and manipulate the arm to guide a soft and thin magnetic wire through arteries and vessels. We imagine, instead of transporting a patient from a rural area to a large city, they could go to a local hospital where nurses could set up this system. A neurosurgeon at a major medical center could watch live imaging of the patient and use the robot to operate in that golden hour. That's our future dream, says Xuan He Chao, a professor of medical engineering and of civil and environmental engineering at MIT. Meet the Lunar Gateway's robot caretakers. An integral part of NASA's plan to return astronauts to the Moon this decade is the Lunar Gateway, a space station that will be humanity's first permanent outpost outside of low Earth orbit. Gateway, a partnership between NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, or CSA, the European Space Agency, or ESA, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, is intended to support operations on the lunar surface while also serving as a staging point for exploration to Mars. Gateway will be significantly smaller than the International Space Station, or ISS, initially consisting of just two modules with additional modules to be added over time. The first pieces of the station to reach lunar orbit will be the Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE, attached to the Habitation and Logistics Output, or HALO, scheduled to launch together on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket in November 2024. The relatively small size of Gateway is possible because the station won't be crewed most of the time. 
Astronauts may pass through for a few weeks, but the expectation is that Gateway will spend about 11 months out of the year without anyone on board. This presents some unique challenges for Gateway. On the ISS, astronauts spend a substantial amount of time on station upkeep, but Gateway will have to keep itself functional for extended periods without any direct human assistance. The things that the crew does on the International Space Station will need to be handled by Gateway on its own, explains Julia Badger, Gateway Autonomy System Manager at NASA's Johnson Space Center. There's also a big difference in the operational paradigm. Right now, ISS has a mission control that's full-time. With Gateway, we're eventually expecting to have just eight hours a week of ground operations. The hundreds of commands that the ISS receives every day to keep it running will still be necessary on Gateway. They'll just have to come from Gateway itself, rather than from humans back on Earth. So, Gateway sounds pretty robotic, doesn't it? iRobot launches Create 3 iRobot has seen fit to announce a brand new robot that is guaranteed to leave your floor 0% cleaner. Yep, you heard that right. There was much rejoicing, because this is not a mop or a vacuum, but instead a new and updated version of iRobot Create, the Create 3. Not only is the Create 3 based on a much more modern Roomba platform, it's also compatible with ROS 2, the unexpectedly mature software that a surprising number of robots are now using to do cool stuff. If this mainstream vote of confidence in ROS 2 by a company like iRobot surprises you, well, then maybe a Create 3 should be the next robot in your life. Create 3 comes equipped with Wi-Fi, Ethernet over USB host, and Bluetooth. Create 3 is also equipped with a suite of intelligent technology, including an inertial measurement unit, or IMU, optical floor tracking sensor, wheel encoders, and infrared sensors for autonomous localization navigation, and telepresence applications. Additionally, the robot includes cliff, bump, and slip detection, along with LED lights and a speaker. What's more, Create 3 brings a variety of new functionalities to users, including compatibility with ROS 2, an industry standard software for roboticists worldwide. Can you compete with robots? When it comes to the future of intelligent robots, the first question people ask is often, how many jobs will they make disappear? Whatever the answer, the second question is likely to be, how can I make sure that my job is not among them? In a study just published in Science Robotics, a team of roboticists from EPFL and economists from the University of Lausanne offers answers to both questions. By combining the scientific and technical literature on robotic abilities with employment and wage statistics, they have developed a method to calculate which of the currently existing jobs are more at risk of being performed by machines in the near future. Additionally, they have devised a method for suggesting career transitions to jobs that are less at risk and require smallest retraining efforts. The result is a ranking of the 1,000 jobs, with physicists being the ones who have the lowest risk of being replaced by a machine, and slaughterers and meatpackers who face the highest risk. In general, jobs in food processing, building and maintenance, construction and extraction appear to have the highest risk. The key challenge for society today is how to become resilient against automation, says Professor Raphael Lalive, who co-led the study at the University of Lausanne. Our work provides detailed career advice for workers who face high risks of automation, which allows them to take on more secure jobs while reusing many of the skills acquired on the old job. Through this advice, governments can support society in becoming more resilient against automation.